Hey guys, it's Rob Seabrook with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. In today's video, we will be going through Apple Calendar. If you're new here, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking for solutions to go paperless with your work, studies or business. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Do turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. Calendar is a planning free application from Apple for tracking your events, appointments and meetings. It is available for your iPhone, iPad and Mac. This review focuses on the iPad version of the application. Apple Calendar complements Apple Reminders, which we have reviewed already and we will have a link to that video in the description down below. Everything you need in the application is on this one screen. It serves both as the home page and the working space of the application. On the left, you have a sidebar that contains your calendars, inbox, schedule, and the plus icon for adding new events. Tapping on this plus icon gives you options to add a title for your event, choose a location, decide if this event is going to last all day or not, the start and end times for that event, select repeating frequencies every day, week, month or year if these don't suit what you need you can always customize the frequency for your weekly repeating events you can choose the days of the week your event will be repeating on monday and thursday for example for your monthly repeating events you can choose the dates when your event will occur every third day of the month and for your yearly frequency you can choose the month for your event and the day of the week. So for example, for your month, you can have a conference call every month of the year on the second Monday of each month. You can schedule your meetings and events to exactly what you need. Every lets you customize the pattern of your frequency. For example, you can have your event repeating every two, three or four weeks. Repeating frequencies saves you a lot of time in the future in that you can schedule all your repeating tasks for a year in advance. You can set the date when your repeating ends. For example, you could have a workshop that is running every day for a week and you can set the last date for the workshop and the app will stop repeating the event on that day. You can add travel time if you have to travel to the event. Event alerts will add traveling time when creating alerts for you. For your alerts, you can set your calendar to alert you at the start of the travel time, 5, 10, 15 or 30 minutes before travel time, an hour or two before a day or two, or a week before you travel. You can set two alerts if you really don't want to miss an event. You can choose a calendar to add your event to from the list of calendars in your application. You can invite people to the event via email. iCloud, Microsoft Exchange, and some CalDev servers allow you to send meeting invitations. Show as busy on your calendar so people inviting you to meetings know when you're free. You can attach files from the Files app. If there's anything you want your attendees to look at before your meeting, you can add relevant URLs, add notes, you can create new events from other applications. In Apple Notes, data detection allows you to add events to the calendar directly from your notes. You get all the features in the calendars app to create your event within your notes in Apple Notes. You can do the same in other applications, mail, messages, Safari, and agenda. The amazing thing about Apple Calendar is that you can have many calendars in the application. You can, as in my case, have a family, work, and personal calendar and the app will show all the events scheduled in all these different calendars at once. You can choose to hide information from certain calendars by simply deselecting that calendar here on the sidebar. The birthdays calendar displays your contacts birthdays so you don't forget any important birthdays and this integration with the contacts app is really cool. By tapping on the date of the birthday you can access your contacts information without leaving Apple Calendar. To add a new calendar, tap Add Calendar at the bottom left corner of the sidebar. You can then name your calendar.
choose a color for it from seven options. What are the chances you will want to create more than seven different calendars? Once you've created your calendar, you can add more information to it. You can choose to share it with someone and allow that person to edit the calendar if you want. Works best for family and work calendars. You want everyone invited to the calendar to have the ability to make changes to your schedule. You can make your calendar public, then share the link. Anyone can then subscribe to a read-only version of this calendar. And of course, you can delete the calendar. You can add iCloud, Google, Exchange, or Microsoft calendars by adding accounts to your calendar in settings. If you're using multiple calendars, you can view all of that information in one place using Apple Calendar. You won't have to worry about organizing or keeping your meetings in one calendar. You can add a meeting to your Google Calendar and it will appear in your Apple Calendars if you connect your Google Calendar. And once you've added your Google Calendar to Apple Calendar, you can edit the meetings in your Google Calendar here in this application. Apple Calendar blocks your meetings in the application, showing you when you're busy and when you're free. People can invite you to meetings from iCloud, Microsoft Exchange, and CalDev. You get three response options, accept, maybe, and decline. In your inbox, you can see all your invitations and the invitations you've responded to. When you mark an event as busy, people who are trying to send you invitations or people that are inviting you to meetings will be alerted that you're not free. It saves you time in that everyone knows when you're busy when scheduling meetings with you. If you want others to see that time as free, then just mark it as such when you create your event. The people trying to invite you will get alerted that you are free, but the calendar will still block it on your personal calendar in Apple Calendar. On your screen, you can choose to view your day, week, month, or year. You can search your calendars for titles, invitees, locations, and notes. The app displays your results on the right side. And tapping on the search results pops up the event, which you can either edit or delete. You can easily navigate back to today's date by tapping today, no matter where you are on the calendar. You can edit any event by simply tapping on it. When you edit a repeating event, you have two options to save the changes for this event only or for future events as well. You can turn on Siri and search to allow Siri to make suggestions in Apple Calendar. You can allow Siri to suggest app, show in search, show content in search, suggest shortcuts for app. This allows Siri to search and show information in the application from your home screen. When you turn on time zone override, your events will always show the dates and time of the selected time zone that you choose. When off, events display according to your current location. Apple Calendar has three alternative calendars that you can use, Chinese, Hebrew, or Islamic dates. You can turn on week numbers, show invitee declines when people decline your events or your meetings, heartbreaking, you can choose to see those or choose not to see them. You can choose to sync events from two weeks, a month, three or six months ago, or all the events in your calendar. You can select when your week starts and choose a default calendar. New events you create outside a specific calendar will be automatically added to this default calendar. Apple Calendar has everything you need to track your meetings and schedules for your days. It syncs across all your devices and integrates seamlessly with other Apple apps for a powerful workflow. It is definitely worth a try. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.